All right, my friend, I hope you had no trouble at all to train that K-means model on the data set in order to identify that optimal five number of clusters, which we figured out thanks to the elbow method. Because indeed, in order to do this, you just had to do exactly the same as what we did here inside this loop by just replacing that I number of clusters here, which is the iterative variable by five. Because now we know that we want to build, train and run the k-means algorithm to identify five clusters. And therefore here, we're simply going to take these two lines of code and we're gonna paste that right below in a new code cell to indeed train our k-means model to identify five clusters, all right? And we don't have to import the k-means class again because this was imported here, you know, right here and this cell was already executed, so no problem at all here. We can just call this class directly and input here, of course, not i clusters, but five clusters to identify. And same still, we use the k-means plus plus init method to avoid the random initialization trap, and we keep a random state of 42 in order for us to have the same results displayed on our notebook. And now this line of code actually indeed trains the k-means model on the data set to identify five clusters. But as I told you in the previous tutorial, we also want to do something else, which is to build that dependent variable finally, of which the values are, you know, exactly these clusters from one to five. So actually, you know, the values of this dependent variable will be one, two, three, four, five. One will be, you know, let's say cluster one, two will be cluster two, three will be cluster three, four will be cluster four, and five will be cluster five. And each of these clusters will actually be a certain group of customers, because remember that our data set is composed of customers, which will actually be grouped or segmented into these clusters, these five clusters. And so there you go, that dependent variable, which we're about to create, will split through its values, well, all these customers into different groups. All right, so that's what I meant by we are creating indeed a dependent variable. And so there you go, that's our next step here. How are we going to create that dependent variable? Well, I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you look at the API of scikit-learn for k-means, you know, the k-means class, well, you will notice that there is actually a fit underscore predict method. And that fit predict method not only trains your k-means model on the data set, but also it returns exactly that dependent variable which we're about to create, you know, with the five different values taken by that variable, you know, one, two, three, four, five, which of course correspond to these five different clusters containing different groups of customers. And in each group, well, the customers are grouped by similarities. You know, they contain similar information in each group. And in the next step, you know, when visualizing the clusters, you will perfectly understand what will be exactly this information. But I don't want to reveal them now, so we're just going to create that dependent variable for now. And since, as I've just told you, well, this fit predict method returns that dependent variable, well, we're going to create a new variable here, which we're going to call y underscore k means. You can call it y k means, or you can call it y pred if you want. You know, that's also the name we usually choose for our dependent variables. But since it results from the k-means algorithm, I prefer to call it yk-means, plus we won't have to compare it with a y-test variable. So that's why I want to make it a bit different. But there you go. Here with this line of code, you know, calling the fit break method, we create indeed this dependent variable resulting from training our k-means algorithm with five clusters, you know, to identify five clusters. Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's run this cell to train the k-means algorithm to identify five clusters and all good. It was run properly. And now I'm just going to show you what we just created, you know, y k-means. So I'm gonna input here y underscore k-means inside this print. There you go. Let's run it and let's see what we created. And well, there you go. You can see now all the different clusters to which belongs each customer. So here, you have to read it this way. The first customer belongs to cluster three, so that's actually customer ID number one. 
customer ID number one belongs to cluster three, and actually it belongs to cluster number four because this is only the index of the cluster. And remember that indexes in Python start from zero. So here, actually the numbers of the clusters are zero, one, two, three, and four. So let's be careful what we say with them. So let's do it again. Customer ID number one belongs to the fourth cluster. Then customer ID number two belongs to the first cluster. Customer ID number three belongs to the fourth cluster and etc. And the last customer ID belongs to, well, I have to go to the second page here. There you go, the customer ID number 200 belongs to the third cluster or cluster of index two. All right, so there you go. That's the dependent variable that is created through the training of the k-means algorithm. And so now let's proceed to our last tip. We're gonna visualize the clusters on a 2D plot where you're gonna have on the x-axis, well, you know, the annual income, that's our first feature, and on the y-axis, the spending score. And we will see how our different customers, you know, the different customers of the mall were grouped into these clusters. And we're gonna clearly see the different clusters and their centroid from one to five on this 2D plot. Okay, so I actually can't wait to show you this because it's gonna be a very clear graph and once again that's the reason i only want to keep two features here to be able to visualize this clearly and well that's exactly what we're going to do in the next tutorial so as soon as you're ready join me i won't ask you to implement this on your own we will do it together and we will enjoy the results together and until then enjoy machine learning